they're working on some bullshit ad server. They're working on like one pixel on one corner of one yes. thing. They're working on some project that's going to get killed. Yes. Like, well, my friend, I was a guy who worked on those quote unquote BS ad servers at Google for two years. I left early 2022, right around here. I was a lowly L4 engineer. I was getting paid $160,000 base salary plus 15% bonus plus 255,000 stock options plus $20,000 sign down bonus. So the total compensation is about $270,000 for the first year. Now the question is, what has to happen for you to not want that kind of money? Now let's talk about it in three aspects, technology, culture, and business. About technology, there are certain things that people think about Google that's just not quite true. I'll call them myths. So before I joined Google, I used to work at a startup where the day-to-day -day job was basically using this framework to hook up APIs and do this and that. It gets kind of tiring. That's why I decided to try a bigger company. And I used to think the work at Google would be so amazing. It would be changing the world using cutting edge tools. But the reality is, I would say like 90% of people at Google are just doing whatever everyone else is doing other companies. You take some data, put it somewhere else and build some business app, all of it. In fact, there's a joke inside the company that Google should actually be called Larry and Sergey put above moving company. And because it's such a big company, your scope is likely to be much smaller. Changing a pixel on the screen is a bit of an exaggeration, but honestly, it's not that big a exaggeration. <laughs> Back when I work at a startup, every time I see spaghetti code or bad infrastructure, I would say something like, if this was at Google, they would have done it better. I was having this imagination where everybody at Google loves technology and you'll be discussing the newest feature in Rust, uh, how Postgres made it faster to do this query and all that stuff, which sometimes happens, but majority of the time you're just grinding a business feature, trying to please the project manager who ask you to move pixel from here to there. Again, when I work at a startup, every time I had an infrastructure issue or a dependency issue, I would say something like, oh, this if there was a Google, they would have fixed this properly. But the reality is that's really not the case. You're gonna have dependency health, especially when you have even bigger code bases. You're gonna have a flaky test that breaks your pipeline and prevents you from shipping your feature. All that stuff is just part of life as software engineers. Google has some good tools, but is it better than open source? I don't think so. Open source has 10x the developer numbers. And say Google engineers are good, but they are not 10x good. And there's certainly a lot of legacy code at bigger corporations. I remember this ad database I was working on. One object had uh, hundreds of fields, and this one field has been changed like four times in the last 10 years. And working around it without documentation is just extremely difficult. And the person who worked on that already laughed. So you just have to guess or figure something out or make a new field, which makes things worse. To be honest, it's not fun. But then why do you think you're getting paid big bucks to do this stuff? Because no one else wants to do it. Just like most cooperations, there is a performance review thing at the end of the year where the manager will give you a rating just like, I don't know, high school. And your salary next year will be based on that, which in itself sounds pretty good. That's how you should manage employees, right? This really shapes the culture of your company because you're telling your employee this is what a company values. Except I feel in this case, the incentives aren't designed exactly right. How do you get promoted? Have more people working under you. So now it becomes a race of trying to make your project look important and hire more people so you can achieve them. Essentially sandbagging. What's sandbagging? The sandbagging is basically where you set goals that are intentionally way easy to hit with the goal of blowing them out of the water, right? So say, you know, you can accomplish something in one week, the sandbag version of the goal is to give yourself a month. And then when you go around and you hit the goal, you like look like a genius. And what's funny is when you are working for the man, when you are working at a company like office space, you know, you're in a cube farm somewhere. <laughs> um, it makes sense to sandbag goals. And that's actually great career advice, I suppose, is that you, you know, you set really, you convince people that something's really hard to do and then you exceed their expectations. What a great way to get promoted or whatever. Of course, However, there's a problem. If you're used to doing that, and that's how you think all things should work, when you start working for yourself, when you are your own boss, you are screwing yourself. And what may be a good strategy to like rest and best working at Google or Facebook and to just do as little work as possible by sandbagging goals and working three hours a week or whatever people do. When you're the boss, do you see how that's like not great? Well, and you better believe that big company you work for didn't have that culture when it was starting. Yeah, the founders of that company were not doing that. No. Our so my goal since I was a kid has always been to run my own business. And, you know, being a Google engineer gives you some legitimacy, but staying for too long is also a bit of a red flag. 
Speaking of which, you should check out this website I built, Algo Monster. It condenses everything I learned about grinding lead code to get into Google. It's essentially a crash course for lead code. It has features like speed runs, templates, patterns. It will make your life so much easier. And now let's talk about business. Google's business is almost entirely on advertising. All that stuff you hear about, self-driving cars, Google Play, Google Cloud, all losing money. Advertising pays for it, almost everything. That in itself is not a huge problem. Search ads has such a good product market fit, Google can make money years to come. But I can sense there is a certain degree of complacency that we can just open up more ad slots and make more money every quarter. With all these billions of dollars of ad money, everything else seems a little bit too small to move the needle. I can't really think of anything Google launched in the last 10 years, to be honest. And the emergence of ChatGPT is certainly a threat. And Microsoft got into the game early to invest in OpenAI and improve the Bing search engine. And you may think Google gets its traffic for free since it's such a big source of organic traffic. That's really not the case. When you're searching, say, Safari or Firefox, how much does Google pay Apple and Mozilla for that default search engine status? According to a financial statement of Alphabet, Google pays about $11 billion every quarter just to remain the default search engine on those browsers. Some of the most revolutionary technologies, some of the genre-defending technologies such as big data, GFS, HDFS, Kubernetes, machine learning, they were all invented by Google, but they are now being monetized. Who's making the most money? Amazon, AWS. AWS has a commanding market share in cloud computing and contributes about half of total Amazon's profit. In comparison, Google is only third place and loses money. I think it's fair to say there are some problems with business decision making at the top. That was a lot of rambling. I just want to say in the end, despite all these problems, Google is probably still the best place at work so far. The people I work with are some of the smartest I've ever met. What do you guys think? Is Google going up or down? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.